Oh. What's up everyone? I wanted to do a video on my cooling system. If you don't know, I have a like full custom cooling system on my S2000. And when I was first taking on this challenge of designing a cooling system with a closed radiator and a, a electric water pump and all that stuff, it was uh, pretty confusing because I'm used to the OEM stuff, being a former OEM engineer. Um, so anyway, uh, why would you want to do a completely custom water uh, cooling system? Well, when you do an electric water pump, there's uh, electric water pumps don't have drag, they don't get driven up by the engine, so there's no belt. So there's no, less drag on the engine. Um, they can be less weight. Um, when you run a closed radiator, you can put the radiator in any uh, position that you want to, and you don't have to worry about having the cap at the highest point on the radiator. We'll talk about what a closed radiator is in a minute. Um, with an electric water pump, it can be computer controlled, so it can be pumping full fluid at idle. So if you if you got the car really hot on track and you want to cool it off uh, quickly when you when you park it, you can just sit there and run the the water pump at full blast while um, the car is just idling or not even running at all. Um, and then this system also self bleeds itself, so no longer do you have to uh, kind of sit there and you know, there's bleed ports on the intake manifold on the stock S2000. So it's, it basically makes sure that there's no air in the system the whole time while it's running. Um, so check out this diagram I made real quick. This, uh, this just kind of gives you the overview of, of how the system flows. And uh, yeah, so let me flip it around here. All right, so here's my diagram. Um, first, let's go over the different pieces, I guess. Uh, we have a radiator, swirl pot, uh, the engine, water pump, and a header tank. Um, header tanks are starting to become more common on uh, production cars, but it's um, basically just a tank that's about two-thirds filled with coolant, and then the top uh, third is just pressurized air. It allows, uh, allows the coolant to expand and contract as, you know, as it heats up, um, and it's just uh, a better way than, than using that, like a barf tank, or at least that's what I call it, where it expels coolant out of the system and then sucks it back in when it cools down. Um, so this is the kind of how all the, the coolant flows. Um, starting at the radiator, it uh, cold air comes out of the bottom of the radiator, um, basically gets sucked out by the water pump and then pushed into the engine, um, cir circles through the engine, and then hot coolant comes out of the engine. And the first place it will go is to that swirl pot, and that's basically just a uh, a pot that swirls the water and attempts to catch any air that's in the system and the pressure just pushes the air back to the header tank um, and then after it swirls through the pot it goes back into the radiator back down and continues to flow but the radiator itself also has a vent at the highest point on the radiator and that will get fed back to the header tank as well and then on S2000s there's actually a, uh, a bleeder port on the intake manifold that will push, that will uh, again push coolant back to the header tank. And, and this is how it self bleeds its system. So air is known to catch here on S2000, so that's why I put, they put the bleeder port. Um, this is just like a backup catch for any other air. And then this is a catch for air in the, in the radiator. So that's basically how it goes. And then um, that will flow back just to a, uh, a fitting that's right before the water pump. And it'll go get sucked down by the water pump and back into the engine. So let's check out what that looks like on the car and I'll actually show you some of the things that I've designed and uh, just kind of some basic things you should be aware of when you're designing a cooling system. All right, so here's the cooling system in real life. Um, let's start with, uh, let's just start with the hoses actually. Um, so these are all Dash 16 AN lines. Um, they're they're made by a company called BMRS. These are the crimp on type, but they have, uh, I don't know if BMRS does, but there are AN hoses that you don't have to do the crimp on as well. Um, they're just nice, nice pieces that, um, yeah, you can thread on and off and it's just a little bit easier to work on when you're constantly working on a race car. So, uh, let's start at the, the head here where the hot, whoop, where the hot coolant comes out. 
I'm sorry if this is bad camera work. It's just my cell phone. Uh, so you're probably going to see some fingers and whatnot. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so this is where it comes out of the head. Um, I actually designed this little billet piece to work with these ITBs uh, so I can go to a uh, A and line straight in there. And it also has a uh, NPT port to run a coolant pressure sensor. And this is kind of a good thing to add. Coolant pressure sensor can let you know when, when the cooling system has lost pressure. And uh, it's just kind of like an early detection that, hey, your car is going to overheat soon because you just lost coolant pressure. Um, so anyway, they... Hot water comes out of the head. This is pretty standard for all cars. Um, and then it travels to the swirl pot. This is uh, actually had this made by Track Tough. These, all these kind of coolant pieces are custom pieces, but he makes a lot of off the shelf stuff as well. Um, so this swirl pot just collects the uh, coolant. It kind of comes in tangential to this canister and it'll swirl. And the idea is if, if there's any air in the system, it'll swirl and those little bubbles will, will uh, swirl to the center and then it'll be pushed out by just the natural flow of the system. Um, so once it swirls through there, it comes down and then it hits the radiator. Um, so this is a CNR radiator that I had specced out, um, has one fan and then uh, has the, the oil cooler over there. I've heard people argue that the oil cooler should go in front, it should go in the rear. Um, I've, I've seen uh, good evidence for, for both cases, to be honest, but so I, I don't think it really makes a difference, but um, for me, the packaging made this uh, a little bit better if I could put it on the backside. Um, but so this is a closed radiator, like I was saying before, so no cap on the top. Um, that's basically all a closed radiator means. And, and when you do this type of system, that means you can mount the, the, the radiator in basically any position you want. Um, I mounted mine at a 45. Um, as the, the air will be kind of ducted up. Uh, so I'm, I'm working on creating a duct for this right now, but it'll go through the, the front bumper grill and then it'll kind of be turned by the radiator and then it'll be ducted out of the, the hood. And that's kind of the, the best way to do it. And there's calculations for how big you want the ducting and how, uh, how big you want the exit and all of that stuff. Um, you're usually limited by the space you have, so you won't be able to make it optimal, but um, it is very important to do, like if you're doing your ducting, to have it nice and smooth curve, uh, as large as curves as you, as you can, instead of doing just sharp angles, because then it'll cause turbulent air and you won't, you won't get as good of cooling performance. Um, so anyway, here's the radiator. It's, it's, a, it's a dual pass. So basically that means it will top, uh, let's get over here. The top half of the radiator it'll flow across and then it'll collect in this tank and and flow across the other side and exit the same side as it came in on uh, and that will make it nicer for uh, the ducting that I'm going to do and it's kind of set up how the original S2000 is where um, the exit entrance is on the same side there's a shot of my oil cooler I'll probably do a video about my oiling system because it's got a pretty crazy oiling system too but Anyway, so here's the vent that I was talking about. Um, I guess this is kind of a high point and air has kind of been known to get trapped in radiators in just a small spot. So this, uh, again, will like push all of that air out towards that header tank. Um, so now that we're, we're exiting the radiator, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crawl under here. <laughs> um, and I'm using a a Davies Craig water pump. How's this going for? <laughs> um, so I made this little mount guy. Um, this is the Davies Craig EWP150, which means it moves 150 liters per minute or something like that. Um, and in reality, you're supposed to rubber mount these uh, just to save the electronics. So. This is actually only mounted by two bolts, but uh, it's not a very heavy item. Um, and you should probably try to avoid mounting it to the block just because of the vibrations, but I do have a, a rubber mount for that. And then uh, this kind of clamp that holds onto the front of the, the pump like that. And it's uh, also rubber mounted. I'm gonna get a brush out of it there. Yeah. And that's just billet 7075 aluminum. Um, and then I made this, uh, let's get over here. <laughs> uh, 
I made that uh, inlet piece here. Um, there we go. So that's the return for the header tank. Um, so all that, those vents that get pushed in the header tank and then the air gets trapped in the header tank, the coolant will uh, flow back into the system right before the pump. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it for the water pump. Um, I probably would recommend not using a Davies Craig. I'm going to see how it works for, for mine, but I kind of learned uh, later that they're not the, the most highest of quality, but uh, um, they are nice because they're small and light and you can fit them in a lot of places. So uh, anyway, that's my two cents on the, the water pump. Um, and while we're down here, um, this is how I, uh, I designed these brackets for the radiator, um, super lightweight, uh, did all the FEA on these. Um, you'll notice it's kind of a saddle. Not, it's also it's controlled by the pins in the radiator, um, but there's also kind of a saddle here that holds it. Um, that's all that rubber lining. When you mount your radiator, you want everything that's touching it to basically be rubber, because uh, as you know, probably aluminum cracks fairly easily. So. Uh, you want everything that touches it to be rubber. That's exactly how all the OEM stuff is. Here's a bottom shot of where it comes out of the radiator. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty trick design how I mounted it, I think. Um, so from the pump, there is this dash 16 line. You can kind of see her down there, the pump. Uh, and it comes up and goes into the block here. And this is, again, another uh, piece made by Track Tough, which is a plate that allows you to delete your, if you're familiar with the S2000 uh, engine, there's usually a, a bunch of bracketry here that has uh, the water pump and uh, the alternator mount and all that stuff. So this cleans all that up um, and makes it look nice and, nice and neat. So that's where it goes into the head. Um, so the last piece to talk about really is the header tank. Um, as you can see, it's kind of the highest point of the whole engine bay. Um, it's just maybe like, I don't know, 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters below the hood when the hood's closed. Um, and all of that, uh, those vents will pump to this tank. And like I said, so about two thirds of it will be filled with coolant and then the, the, the rest of it will be air. And um, it just keeps a, a column of pressurized air to allow the, the coolant to expand and contract as it heats up and cools down. So it doesn't have to keep spitting out and, and sucking in coolant uh, per their usual. So if you see stuff scored out here, you probably have something wrong. Um, and I will probably, the way I was told was uh, you can run a little line to your, to your windshield and tape it to your windshield. Uh, so if it does um, uh, squirt out fluid, you'll see it come up on your windshield and you'll know that you have an issue and you can pull in so you don't, uh, you know, overheat or grenade your engine. Just another, another warning device, basically. Um, so one more quick thing. Uh, I'm going to turn it on. This is, I'm going to make a carbon fiber inlet duct. So that's what this blue or this pink foam is here for. Um, so that's going to be a chore. Stay tuned for that. And while I'm doing this, um, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have it worked out. So if, if I want to, whoa, if I want to cool my car off while the engine's not running, I just have a button here. Boom! Turn on the water pump. You can hear her uh, flowing. And since one of my vent lines is actually clear, you'll be able to see it flow probably if there's any air in there, which is probably not because I've already bled it, but yeah, you can't see it. Um, but anyway, so now my coolant system is basically flowing without even having to run the engine. So it's, it's just a nice extra feature that you can have uh, with that. Electric water pump. Cool. All right, so I hope that was helpful. If you, again, if you guys have any questions, I probably forgot a bunch of crap. Drop them in the comments. I'll try to answer them the best I can. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please do, because I quit my freaking job to do race car stuff full time. That's right, I was miserable, so I was like, screw it, I'm gonna do race car stuff. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. 
But anyway, uh, also, if you don't follow me on Instagram, hit that up. Uh, I do all my like day-to-day -day stuff, all my prints that I'm doing for prototypes and stuff like that. Um, and I will be selling a lot of the parts that you see on this car. Um, and I also will do custom parts for people as well. So if you have uh, certain designs that you want uh, to meet your certain specifications, I can do that for you and perform the FEA and all of that. So. Um, anyway, uh, thank you again for watching and uh, deuces.